You know what one of the coolest experiences of my life was? I got to meet a friend's cousin and two of us hung out on the mall right after we all presented an exam. We had a bunch of great conversations while walking around and when we sat down to eat some burgers together, not kidding, I realized how cool it was that she had a Pulp Fiction shirt at that moment since we came upon an uncomfortable silence and we proceeded to quote Vincent Vegas and Mia Wallace's estate. Not gonna lie, that was amazing. Top 10 best days of my life. Pulp Fiction is the second film directed by Quentin Tarantino. It stars John Travolta, Samuel L. Jackson, Oma Thurman, Bruce Willis, Bing Rames, Harvey Keitel, Christopher Walken, Tim Roth, Amanda Plummer, and basically one of the most iconic casts ever put on film. And it's about, well, you already know it. Released on the 14th of October of 1994, this film made an insane cultural impact with the breakthrough of Tarantino and his unique style of filmmaking. It revitalized the career of John Travolta and further elevated those of Emma Thurman and Samuel Lloyd Jackson. Walked away with the 1994 Palme d'Or from the Cannes Film Festival and seven Oscar nominations which included a win for the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, as well as many other countless awards and has been credited by many film critics and thousands of fans as one of the best films of all time. So, with that kind of hype, one has to wonder, where does it all come from? There's something about Tarantino's incopiable idiosyncrasy that you can't quite put your finger on. It's sleazy, it's violent, it's laid back, it's vulgar, it's dark, it's hilarious, and this film will probably be immortalized for eternity as his absolute best example of it. We have to begin with its unique screenplay that came to fruition through two separate stories by Tarantino and Roger Avery. The creation of these stories along with the eventual third one brings such a fun combination of intertwined characters through their respective segments that become so magnetic by its dark humor, its development, the recurring themes and just the sheer insanity of each of the situations they get into. The dialogue is both unbelievably stylized yet it manages to feel natural and surprisingly real. The dialogue itself was actually deemed realistic by several critics when it came out, but with time it's clearly become noticeable how stylized it is. And yet, it still feels real. This is all due to an all-around stellar cast bringing their A-plus game. John Travolta is so naturally charismatic in this role and feels so comfortable with both his character and his partners by developing such easy-going and fun chemistry with Samuel Will Jackson's Jules Winfield that bring the now iconic conversations to life so vividly. Gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped? Oh, what the fuck's happening now? Oh, oh man. Shit. man! Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the fuck you do that? He also strikes a special chemistry with Emma Thurman's Mia Wallace, which becomes an effortlessly entertaining will they do it or not quasi romantic friendly relationship for much of their shared segment. Going back to Samuel L. Jackson, he dominates the screen with both his exchange with Travolta Vincent Vega, but also with his powerful yet subtle transformation where he realizes the simple yet complex arc of a decently violent man beginning to change his ways after witnessing a divine intervention. Jules. Don't do that. Don't fucking blow this shit off. What just happened here was a fucking miracle. Chill, Jules. This shit happens. Wrong. Wrong. This shit doesn't just happen. The film closes with an absolute banger of an ending, and while everyone in the cast is clearly giving it their all, it's Jackson's realization of his character's struggle between his habitual violence and newfound beliefs that changes the man for the better, which takes such a firm and strong command of the screen through his extremely memorable monologues. Or it could mean, you're the righteous man, and I'm the shepherd, and it's the world that's evil and selfish. Now I'd like that. But that shit ain't the truth. Mathurma not only infects the viewers with such charming sexiness in his creation of Mia Wallace, but helps developing such a joyful dynamic with Travolta that stays with you for so long after the second is done. Three tomatoes are walking down the street. Papa tomato, mama tomato, and baby tomato. Baby tomato starts lagging behind, and Papa tomato gets really angry. Goes back and squishes him. Says, ketchup. Hmm. <laughs> 
The rest of the cast includes what remains a somehow underappreciated turn by a sweet, darkly comical and full of bravado Bruce Willis, a fascinatingly fun and scene-stealing commanding turn by Harvey Keitel as the wolf, a menacing and hilarious performance by Bing Rames, and also hilariously dedicated Once in Wonder by Christopher Walken, and the modern Bonnie and Clyde almost once again tragic pairing of Tim Roth and Amanda Plummer as Pumpkin and Honey Bunny to give us that wonderful kickstart to the film. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! Any of you fucking pricks move! And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you! Tarantino's direction only ever amplifies and distinguishes his aforementioned style through his now so obviously trademarked music choices, unassuming cinematography, and camera movements that beautifully construct each scene. Salimankis editing helps elevate the film's well-realized tones, whether it is through the comical cuts or carefully put together action and suspenseful sequences. Hell, even the makeup works really well for some of the more physical aspects of all the characterization and events that occur later on. Now, admittedly, I do have a couple of nitpicks with the film. Remember what I mentioned about the screenplay some seconds ago? Well, with it having such a specific dialogue during scenes, it's left to the performances to bring it to life, and there's one scene in particular that I feel fails to do so at times, and borders on becoming annoying, and not much to the Willis' performance, which does have a well-delivered hell of an e-slapper. He's dead? The radio said he was dead. But due to another performer, who I feel quickly becomes repetitive and not so interesting, and yes, we're all familiar with a certain continuity error, however, it never really amounts to something that truly bothers me to an insufferable degree. You have to give it to them. It's such a strange once-in-a-lifetime home run of a film that punches its mark on cinema's history with such effortlessness. When I rewatched the film prior to making this review, I was gleefully smiling from ear to ear by the opening credits and had such a rush of nostalgia despite only having first seen the film a little over two years ago. Why was that? I really can't quite tell. But is that Tarantino genesis quad that swept your feet on your first watch and introduction to his unique brand of filmmaking that you can't help but love? that fills you up with such an incomparable joy with every new watch. I honestly can't think of anything that sums up the magic of a film better than the screenplay's closing lines. Vincent throws some money on the table and Jules grabs the briefcase. Then, to the amazement of the patrons, the waitresses, the cooks, the bus boys and the manager, these two badass dudes wearing UC Santa Cruz and I'm with stupid t-shirts, swim trunks, tongs, and packed with 45 automatics, walk out of the coffee shop together without saying a word. Fade out, the end. That, it's in my opinion what makes Pulp Fiction so great to this day, almost 25 years later. And for that, I'm giving Pulp Fiction an A+. Thank you guys so much for watching what's formerly my first ever film review. My following reviews will be Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs, Jackie Brown, all of his films leading up to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. My first set of performance reviews will be intertwined among those in the same way as my more contemporary reviews which will begin with Elton John's biopic, Rocketman. Stay tuned for those and more upcoming videos. Also, if you enjoyed this video almost as much as I enjoy making it, feel free to support me on Patreon and follow me on my official Facebook page since I don't really fancy Twitter all that much. The links are down in the description. I'm an adapted, and if you like this, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more and I'll return with a new video soon. That's all.